clear outstanding peculiarity of an uncommon Christian is this. He has a real passion, not merely a profession or some kind of a sentiment, but he has a real passion, a Calvary love, a Calvary passion and compassion that Jesus had for the dying and the perishing. The, uh, William Burns, the most glorious memory of Scotland and of China, he, he was a, as a young uh, country boy, he hadn't been in the city of Glasgow, but one day his mother took him in there. He was a divinity student at the time, and going up our guide seat there, she missed him. Turning back, she saw him up a cloak, and he was on his knees with his face buried in his hands, and his body was about convulsed with agony, and the tears streaming between his fingers uh, as he had covered his face. And she put her hand on him and said, William, my boy, what ails you? And he turned his distorted and, and, and tears, the tears, the dim eyes to his mother and said, Mother, the thud of these Christless feet on the road to hell is more than I can bear. Oh, dear friend, how many of us we get just cold and indifferent and the thud of Christless feet on the road to hell is never felt or seen by. It. But when you get an uncommon Christian, the spirit of Jesus Christ is hell. A spirit of pity, a spirit of passion, a spirit of compassion. He sees men and women that are going to live as long as God lives, either in heaven or in hell. Now that he is saved and sanctified by the spirit of God and induced by the spirit of God and taught in the things of God's word, to lead him out to lead that to lead men and women to Christ. And wherever he is and whatever he's doing, he's concerned day in and day out about those who are out of Christ, without hope and without God in the world. If you have your Bible handy, or your testament, would you kindly turn to the Gospel according to John chapter 10, and reading from verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheep, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, by him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own name, his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. You see, he was a, these men were sellers, they weren't shepherds, and they didn't understand just then the meaning of this parable. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it above, that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeketh the wolf, see, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. It is quite correct to say I am the beautiful shepherd. He was not only good intrinsically, but outward attractive. I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of man. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division therefore among the, uh, again among the Jews for these things, and many of them said, He hath a death, 
and his mouth. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? My subject, dear friend, is the is a non common Christian, and you'll find the text in the tenth verse. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, says Jesus, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. A great Greek scholar called Dr. Young has translated the verse this way, and his translation gives me the title for my subject. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it above the common. And so I want to speak to you, dear friend, for a wee while, the life that's above the common, or a non-common Christian. You have the same thing in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, and verse 14. Until I saw this, this verse always puzzled me. Here it is. For many are called, but few are chosen. I used to think that was hardly king to fair, to be called and then to be turned down after your call. But you see, when you put away, when this verse is literally rendered, it clears up the mystery. It says, uh, many are called, but few, choice one. Choice one. I like that. And here we have this. I am come that ye might have life, and that ye might have life above the common. Life that can come, a non-common Christian. You know we have got that we've got that everywhere in every phase of life. You get one fella and he's a scholar at school and he goes through with go with go with gold and with gold medals and honors and another fella merely get gets through with a skid of suit. Common and uncommon. You get a person at the piano and they'll play there until you're charmed and you wonder whether you're in the body or out of the body, and another one will rattle along yonder and you wonder what on earth they're trying to get at. And the one is uncommon. And the other come. One man will be in a line of business and he'll make a fortune. And retire when he's early in life. You get another man, he's been at the same business all his life, but he never seems hardly to get his nose off the grindstone and just keeps about one step ahead of the, of, of bankruptcy. Common and uncommon. You see, if they hear a person sing and you're charmed to the depths of your soul, and they, 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 another one will get up there and they'll murder you and the music and everything else. The one is common, and the other is uncommon. And just as truly as you have it in ordinary life, everyday life, so you have it in the Christian life as well. There are Christians that are common, very common, and they're very men. And there are others who are uncommon, uncommon, choice ones, the Lord calls them. Uncommon, choice believers. <clears throat> Let me ask you, dear friend, what kind of a Christian are you? I hope you believe that you're really a Christian and that you know you are one, that you've repented of your sin and your self-righteous rags, and you've accepted Christ as your own personal Savior, and you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. If you have, that just as truly and as surely as you have, as many as receive him, to them gives you the power to become the sons of God. And if you've returned to Christ, accepted him as your Savior, trusting his blood and righteousness, Glory to God, you have eternal life. So you look back to that day. Well, dear friend, whenever you come, whenever you come to, to be a, to, to see what an uncommon Christian is, there are certain outstanding characteristics or peculiarities that betray that. You've got cause and effect everywhere in life. A person couldn't have measles without the, without the effect and the sign of it. The, you couldn't have sickness without ill health. You couldn't have two and two without making four. You couldn't have come set without sunrise. You got cause and effect. And you couldn't be saved. And you couldn't be saved and be an uncommon Christian and not know. There are outstanding peculiarities that will betray you as sure as you live. And the first is this. If you get an uncommon Christian, he is born again. Born again. The second time he's born again and he knows it. He doesn't say, I hope I am or I think I am or I believe I am or I trust I am. He knows it. K-N-O-W, no. He knows it. He can tell you the very time and the place where it happened. He can tell you just exactly the circumstances of it. He can give you a good ringing testimony of how you passed from death unto life and all about it. He knows it. He's got it. The Spirit has answered to the blood 
and tell them that he's born of God. I don't believe, dear friends, that you could be truly a child of God and not know. But whenever you're an uncommon Christian, you've got the clear, full assurance of things. You haven't a shadow of a doubt. Great many Christians that are really, that are really born again, I believe, but they, 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 they're often wrong. Sometimes they think they're all right, and then they think that other times they think they're all wrong. And then you speak to them in the corner of the middle and say, well, I hope I am, I think I am, I trust I am, I believe I am, but they're not dead sure. Other, other times again, they may, they may think they are and have a kind of a feeling and a, an assurance some way or another that they really are born again. But whenever you get a real, a real uncommon believer, he has a steadfast hope, he has assurance, certain knowledge, he has a feeling, the, 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 the assurance in his own soul that he is a child of God and an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, that he possesses eternal life, that his sins are forgiven for his main sake. Oh, there's no doubt about it, friend. And he, he's able to, he's able to sing and shout about it. Maybe he may not know, he may have forgotten the very date of the calendar or the very time of the clock and he may have got the certain, forgotten the, the, the circumstances. But the fact that he's born again, there isn't a shadow of a doubt. You see, when some people get converted or saved or born again when they're very young and they turn to Christ, there's not much use. There's not much of a, a difference in their, in their after life after that. But if they've truly been born again, they'll always have the assurance. And when they come into the life of life above the common, it's an assurance that never will. Their, 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 their interest in Christ is never clouded. There, there's, there, there's a feeling and satisfaction in their heart is never done. Blessed assurance, Jesus is man. Oh, what a full thing of, of, of glory divine. Heirs of salvation and purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story and this is my song, praising my Savior all day long. And thank God every day as well as all day long. Tell me, dear friend, have you this? Have you, have you this experience? Is this the joy that you have in your soul? So many are singing at the wee verse of the hymn, Once I thought I walked with Jesus, Ah, what shameful moods I had. Sometimes begging, sometimes uh, trusting, sometimes joyful, sometimes sad. The glory to God when he becomes an uncommon Christian and knows the blessing of that kind of a life. He says, Oh, the peace my Savior gave. Peace I never knew before. And my way has brighter grown since I have learned to know him more. And so, well, and that, the outstanding peculiarity of the first of an uncommon Christian is that he has a full assurance he is born again and he knows it. he is dead sure that he is a child of God and a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ and second another outstanding characteristic and you'll hear him telling, telling it as clear the one as the other and that is it he has been baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire he lived, he lived the Christian life for a good many, maybe a good many days, a good many weeks, or a good many months, I some for years, and up and down, uh, and more down and up kind of an existence. Dissatisfied, disgruntled, defeated, sometimes joyful, sometimes sad, but no ringing testimony, a coward in the face of others, and living that kind of a life, maybe for months or years. And then he came to see that just as truly as the disciples of Lord who were born again and true followers of Jesus Christ were, were devoted to the Lord but continually defeated by the devil in one way or another. And they, they, the Lord told them one day, he said, you, you've got to tarry, you've got to wait for the promise of the Father which said he, you've heard of me. And they'd heard him, heard about it. He had taught them again and again for they were the, every one of them make reference to it in the gospel. And he says, you've got to tarry until you be endued with power from on high, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, he said, and they shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And just as they, the disciples, they believed what the Lord said and obeyed what the Lord said, and they went to Jerusalem yonder after the resurrection, and waited and carried until the promise was fulfilled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and then the mighty work of God began. Thousands converted. The world upset, turned upside down. Whole villages and towns saved by God. The dead raised, the sick healed, and the lame, the lame made, the 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 made
and the and the and men looked and, and shouted for joy. So that they, 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 they believed it and they, 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 they became candidates for this promised blessing, the baptism of the Spirit of God. And dear friends, just as truly as the disciples needed it in that day, and for the only way that they could come into the blessing in their an uncommon life that, as they did when you've got it recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, so it is just the same today. The record of their life with the gospel and the record of that, un un oh, oh, that their uncommon Christian life that became theirs after Pentecost, that's all on record for you and me. That what they, what they, what they obtained and what they found the need of is just the same for us today. I can't for the life of me understand how men and women will say, well, that was, uh, that, that, that invitation was given uh, to me uh, to form the church and to baptize into the body of Christ. Why, well, these men were already born again. These men and women, the Lord told them that they were saved. And their names were written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it was because they were saved that they went to Jerusalem and to Mr. Mar Mrs. Mark's upper room yonder and waited and tarried as the Lord told them until they received this blessing. And when they received it, they went out and uncommon Christian, uncommon workers, and my, what a marvelous, what a marvelous work they did for God. Now what the Lord did for them, dear friend, he can do for you and me. But we've got to conform with his, with his terms and with his condition. And we've got to take our place, place as a bankrupt believer a devoted but a defeated disciple of the Lord. You've done your best, you've decided, you've tried to do this, that, and the other. You've surrendered, you've consecrated, you've made yourself into a public spectacle, and in 2,000 ways, you've done this, that, or the other to try and get a try and live a decent, respectable, and an unashamed kind of Christian life. And you know what a mess you've made of. And you know that you feel no testimony, no nobody to Christ, and there's no, there's no conviction and and courage to, to witness boldly for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're ashamed, because your life would be a contradiction if you made any testimony of your life. Well, friend, if you come there, just as they did, will you not, will you not, will you not believe that what they needed, you need to? And that when the Lord commanded them and said, He commanded them and said, Tarry, wait until you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, and then you'll get power to witness. He says the very same words to you and me. These were written for us. The promise is unto you, you, not the other fellow, you, not the Jew, nor the Gentile merely, but to you, to me. The promise is unto you, and to me, and to our children, and to as many as are as far off under whom the Lord will call. And so do you find if you can live an uncommon Christian life, it will be in the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost alone. There's no substitute for that. You may be a tremendous Bible student, you may be as orthodox as a man or woman could possibly be, you may be zealous and earnest in your, in your endeavors to serve God. You may be a great worker in the Sunday school, a successful worker in this, that or the other, an officer of the church or even a minister of the church. But you'll never know what it is to live a holy, sanctified life and to have power and victory over sin and to serve the devil and win men for Christ. The only thing, that, the, the only provision that God has made for us is by the baptism of the Spirit of God. Some people call it perfect love, some call it a surrendered life, some call it about a yielded life, and some call it about a dedicated life, and a consecrated life. It means all that to your friend. But the, the very words of Jesus are these. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you, will, you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You see, that's the very words of the Lord. We needn't be ashamed of what he said. He knew what he was talking about, and he knew how to tell to express it. And so, when you get an uncommon Christian, He'll tell you after my conversion, but it's always after. It's not that conversion, nor it is not conversion, not being born again. It's after you are born again, a subsequent second secondary uh, uh, work of grace. And uh, after he, 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 the man gets up to testify and tell you how he came into this uh, uncommon life of victory, holiness, day in and day out, uh, at Pentecost, what Pentecost was the disciple to the disciple, glory to God uh, has become to him. And he's telling you exactly the very time and place and how it happened when he received and was baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. Thy Holy Spirit, Lord alone, can turn the heart from sin. His power alone can sanctify and make us pure within. O oh, Spirit of faith and love, come in our hearts, we pray. We baptize each waiting heart with power today. And he lives. And so an outstanding characteristic is this. That the, that the Christian has come to be born again and he knows it, 
and he knows that that life that has got to be lived to the glory of God and the blessing of others, it must be not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then another outstanding peculiarity of an uncommon Christian is this. The Bible is his only, is his one and only rule for faith and practice. He's not carried about by every wind of doctrine and swept around by this, that, or the other. He comes to the word of God. And the spirit of God is his teacher and teaches him, revealing Christ and opening Christ to him and the riches that are his in Christ through the word of God. And so the Bible is his one and only rule. He, he, does, he doesn't do this, that, or the other because he thinks it or somebody merely told him about it. Or said because it kind of suits him. But he says, I know it. It's in the word of God. And he takes the word of God as his rule, as his rule, and practice for life day in and day out. My, how many there are today and they're just carried about one way and another. They're one day this and they're one day another and they think this. Another day it's another and another day it's this. They'd hardly wonder where on earth they are or what on earth they need or whether they are really believers or not. But glory to God when you become an uncommon Christian. You're studied, you're, so you're grounded in the Word of God. And you're, 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 you're day in and day out making it, you're making it the right, the right manner of your soul. It becomes the honey of the honeycomb to your taste and to your, ta and to, to your delight day in and day out. You say, it's your joy and delight to meditate on it. And you take time to be holy and time to read the Word and time to study the Word and seek the illuminating power of the Spirit of God to lead and guide you into all truth as He promised to do. So that you're steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your life, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Friend, if you can, if you can see men and women going to hell and not bother you, you've never been born again. If you, if you can do it without a real, a real burden and a real anxiety, you're not one of the uncommon Christians. You couldn't be an uncommon Christian and not have this anxiety. It's the very spirit of Jesus. It's the very mind that was in Christ. He gave himself up that he might yield himself unreservedly and unconditionally to his Father's will and die on Calvary's cross on the, for the sake of both men and women and for our salvation and for us men. And you and I, if we are really the Lord and possessed by the Lord and the Spirit controlling us, we must have some measure of Calvary love and Calvary passion for dying and perishing men and women. And friends, the, 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 it's an outstanding peculiarity, an outstanding characteristic when they, uh, the, the men and women are concerned about the, the, the winning of, of uh, sinners for Christ. He's concerned to see that his life is so consistent, that he's walking worthy of the Lord every day unto all pleasing, that he's not an offense to the ungodly regarding anything offending or offending in his life, but that he's seeking by life as well as life, by life as well as testimony, to you are by all means to save some. Let me ask you, dear friend, are you an uncommon Christian? You know that you've been a, that you're a Christian, and you maybe have, maybe have been one for years. But are you an uncommon Christian? One above the common. Life that's more abundant and abounding and exuberant. For Jesus Christ is no longer a root out of a dry ground, having no form of comeliness and no beauty in him that you should desire but that he is the fairest among ten thousand, the altogether lovely one, the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, that he satisfied the deepest longings of the heart and has spoiled you forever for the very best the world flesh and the devil can put up. Tell me, dear friend, is that the kind of Christian you are? Or maybe here you are today still without this blessing and yet in your heart anxious and desirous to know, what, know this kind of a life. Let me tell you, dear friend, how it may be you. The Lord says, the Lord, the verse says this, I am come that they might have life. Now how did you get life at the beginning? How were you saved? How did you get converted? You felt your need. You took your place as a lost, guilty sinner, a hopeless, helpless sinner, that you couldn't do a thing to deserve salvation, and you couldn't do your thing to, to help save your soul. And you came before the Lord as a lost, guilty, hopeless, helpless sinner, and you repented of your sin and repented of your doing your best, and repented of all these things, and your notions about it, and you accepted Jesus Christ as you renounced everything, you accepted Jesus Christ by simple faith as your personal thing. Well, when, I, when you accept Christ, in Christ you've got life. You've got forgiveness of sin, the pardon of all your sin. You become a new creation, a new creature in Jesus Christ. The moment you accepted him, that's been your experience. He would tell me the date on the calendar. 
You can tell me when it happened on the time of the clock. You know exactly the year, the place, and the circumstances. And you can say, yes, that's the time that I was saved. I believe I was really converted. Well, dear friend, just as simple and just as clear as that, you may know the life above the common. As you receive Christ as your life, he says, I am come that ye might have life, and I am come, the same, I am come, that ye might have it above the common. And now if you'll take your place and say, I tried in vain a thousand ways to live a decent, respectable, out and out Christian life, and I've only made a failure of it. It's been up and down and down and up, and the, and the Lord devoted to my Lord, I've been defeated continually by the devil and the world, and now I come, Lord, out of my bondage, failure and fear, Jesus, I come, and you receive him in his fullness, the spirit of God to fill and possess you, and he makes you, makes life a non-common Christian life for you. And to maintain that life day by day, is just as sublimely simple. Walking in the light as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with the other, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, keeps on cleansing us from all sin. And so, dear friends, just pray just as you are day by day, as you walk by faith and obedience, Glory to God. The life abundant becomes more abundant. The life above the common becomes more uncommon. Satisfying and satisfactory and an unceasing channel of blessing to a dying and a perishing world. Breathe upon us, Lord, from heaven. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Promise of the Father given. Send us now at Pentecost. While the Spirit over over us. Over all, open all our hearts, we pray. To thine image, Lord, restore us. Witness in our souls today. From all sin, grant us exemption. Wash us in the cleansing flood. Let us know the full redemption purchased for us by thy blood. Lift us, Lord, oh, lift us higher. From the carnal mindset free. Fill us with revining fire. Give us perfect liberty. Breathe upon us. Breathe upon us with thy love, our heart inspire. Breathe upon us, breathe upon us, Lord, baptize us now with fire. And dear friend, just as you are and where you are, as a child of God, in simple faith, it's not a work, lest any man should boast, but in simple, the simple believing faith, I take the promised Holy Ghost, I take the power of Pentecost to fill me now to the uttermost. I take and glory to God he'll undertake. Oh dear friend, don't go out into that life of wilderness. Be dissatisfied and dis uh, discon discon dis disgusted and, and defeated day in and day out to hoping and thinking and wishing and thirsting and making a mess of it. Yeah, I couldn't say hard enough words about it what you said about yourself. Stop it all. And just now as you are, Lord, I come, I come, without any evasion or reservation, possess me, fill me, and glory to God he will this very moment. Lord, bless thy word, and grant that those who have been hearing this today may indeed feel their need deeply and be disgusted with the way they've been living, and make this very moment and hour their transition from a life that's merely common to a life that's uncommon that will be worthy of thee unto all pleasing, fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of the Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name, and for his sake and glory. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel, to stay up to date, with new videos as they come online.